It wasn't pretty, but you know what they say, Justin, a win is a win, and your Cyclones are 7-0. and This is the Iowa State Fan Perspective, and as always, we have to talk about it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Iowa State Fan Perspective. As always, brought to you by us at Play the Fight Song. Justin, we may need a new John Walters call on our intro because I don't know if you had a chance to hear his call last night. I did. The God, the Godfather always delivers, man. What, what a, what a call! What a win! What a game! This is, Justin. This is going to be a pretty open-ended episode. Um, we've had a ton of interaction the last probably three or four weeks. So we appreciate you guys tuning in each and every single week. Before we get into all that, make sure to subscribe, like the video, leave us a comment. We love to read your guys' comments and we are always partnered by our partners at No Rivals, shopnorivals.com. If you use the code PTFS at shopnorivals.com, you guys will get free shipping at No Rivals. As we were told, Justin, last week in some of the comments, yes, I forgot to mention, there is not an Iowa State hat at No Rivals yet. But this is the best hats in all of college sports. I heard that they are working on it. We were talking to them last week, so they are hearing you guys. Please go to their teams tab, request a team, let them know we need Iowa State. You guys are doing your work. You're going to the websites. We appreciate all the work you guys are doing. But if you're like me and Justin, I mean, Justin, we love to rock any other good brands. Like you got a Mississippi State hat, I got a Texas State hat. So they got a ton of good brands too. So they will get Iowa State eventually. But go support them before then and, and rock a different hat that's not the Iowa one. They have a lot better yeah. options. All yeah. right. Justin. Yeah, obviously, again, we're a little tired. We've we've got to stop doing these these three straight weeks of tailgating and binging, but this is the fan perspective, and this is what we do. We're gonna give you guys our perspective from Saturday, uh, from our view. It wasn't pretty, but they got the job done. Justin, how are we feeling tonight? Where do we want to go with this? Feeling good. Yeah, obviously the game wasn't as pretty as it was the previous week in West Virginia, but definitely feeling a little better, at least on this side, than we were a week ago. Um, But it kind of feels like the whole fan base was a little tired, a little tense yesterday, even going around the parking lot. It was a little quieter than usual. I don't know if Cyclone fans are just not used to it being this hot this late in the year, or maybe the night games are starting to wear on us or what, but... This bye week's coming at a really good time for the team. It's coming at a really good time for the team. And Justin, to be honest, it's coming at a really good time for myself <laughs> because I need a I need a break from all of the traveling and then um some of the I don't Ames, Ames loggers we've we've been enjoying maybe a little too much. But Iowa State gets it done at home. Your now 10th ranked cyclones as they slide back one spot. Not surprised. I mean, the AP poll, of course, is going to punish a team and a brand that's not very familiar. You know, if Alabama had struggled. In it's a joke. One of, it's okay. Yeah, you know, if, if Alabama had done the same thing to UCF or or maybe they, they, they win that Vandy game two weeks ago instead of choking that one away, they would have stayed in their, their spot. They wouldn't have moved. But that's just, and that's besides the point. Iowa State fans, we, we're just enjoying the moment. I think um, it's okay to have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. And I think, don't you agree? It's it's a good it is a good chip on the shoulder for the team. I think we received the national credit last week after the win at West Virginia, but now I think everybody I don't want to say turning against us cuz that's not true, but I think that this team has has motivation going forward after the bye week. Yeah, I know we wanted to touch on it a little bit like after we break down the game, but you can definitely start to see the the national narrative shift a little bit in its attention towards Iowa State, especially after some of those big brands start losing and you got to start mm-hmm. kicking teams out. Like, yeah, the fingers are going to start coming towards Iowa State. The microscope's going to get a little hotter. There's going to be a little more attention on the team. And I know we, I don't know if we touched on it in the last video, but we had covered the Vegas spread in five straight games. And I know we were talking about it before yep. this game. Like, the Bills got to come to eventually. Like, Vegas is never <laughs> wrong for that long 
so many times. And obviously Iowa State did not play their best game whatsoever yesterday. But we knew like they were they weren't gonna be playing as well as they were for the entire season. And so I'm just glad that even though they did kind of put up a stinker yesterday, they were still able to come away with a win. Yeah, we have a little more time tonight since we're not previewing a game this week as we'll get you guys a Texas Tech preview next week. So we have a little more time to talk about some extra stuff. Justin, I know you wanted to touch on because this is the fan perspective. What was your perspective on being in Jack Trice Stadium last night? Obviously, we had a chance to go together, so we kind of have the same opinion. But I want to hear yours first on just the overall atmosphere last night. Yeah, as far as the atmosphere goes, it wasn't as quite on wasn't quite on the level that it was for the Baylor game two weeks ago for mm-hmm. that whole whiteout. I wish they would have did a little better job advertising. That they didn't sell. The they didn't. They, they didn't. Go, yeah, they did not go all in on the blackout thing. I don't understand why. Uh uh-uh. uh, but still got another sellout. Jack Trice was sitting at mm-hmm. sixty five or sixty one thousand strong, so that was yep. cool to see. It was yeah, it was the fans were pretty engaged the whole time. I thought it was really good, and obviously there on that last drive after they scored, that was one of the loudest I've heard Jack Trice in a yep. while. Pretty rowdy, was, even though a lot of fans were kind of dipping out with two minutes left, which was kind that of was crazy. crazy. I was crazy. a little surprised to see. I was like, can we at least wait until we get the ball back or something. Yeah. But, but yeah, outside of that, the the drone show was cool. They finally yep. got that. I was uh gotta say, I was a little more impressed with West Virginia's the weekend before. <laughs> I think but, it's because that was your first drone show you've ever seen. It could have been. It looks like that's the thing now. I saw BYU did one on Friday too. Yeah. I I'm but, kind of like they're cool for a one time thing. I don't know if I love them that much to do them every single week. But yeah, yeah, exactly. But anytime you can be in Jack tries to See a comeback like that and be around your fellow Cyclone fans. I mean, you can't beat a can't beat an experience like that. And like on that last drive, they've I'm sure you guys have seen the videos floating around on Twitter and stuff of them playing Mr. Brightside after that last touchdown. That's back to back weeks now. They've been playing that, and the fans have been loving it. I kind of wonder if that's going to become maybe our ne- our new juicy wiggle or something like that. I don't I, I don't think it can be just because not to that level, but like right the but team like, got into it. It was a good time. It was, and it's weird how they play that one after Juicy Wiggle because they played Juicy Wiggle when I was after a block PAT, block PAT to go down twenty seven to twenty eight. That was a that was a bizarre, bizarre time to do play that song. But also on the Mister Brightside thing, like it's Michigan's song. I, I it's that's what they do. I don't really. Well, they're not copy. very good at football, so we're a football school. They're not. They don't. So they don't like have kind of take over for it for now. M- maybe we can do Mister Brightside <laughs> just for this year because they probably don't get a chance to to celebrate Mister Brightside during some of those <laughs> Michigan football games. Exactly. I did not think we were going to slander Michigan on the Iowa State fan perspective tonight, but but I, here we are. A uh, bad football team. Also, guys. Since we're talking bad football teams in Michigan, uh, we just did our live recap last night for Sunday. Go and check that out if when you guys have a chance. We just covered everything here at Play the Fight Song for our college football stuff. Um, outside the Iowa State game, some awesome games yesterday as well. Iowa State was on the top of that list. That's another thing, Justin. Didn't you feel like it was a good game? And if you weren't rooting for Iowa State, you probably enjoyed that game more than I did. Um, just as an overall football game, it felt like the crowd was good, but it was definitely it felt anxious. It felt really mm-hmm. anxious, don't you say? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you could kind of feel the pressure starting to build there. And I mean, any time that you can give up as many rushing yards as we did, I don't know what the total number was. It was a little over three hundred. Anytime you three fifty four. Anytime you can give up three hundred and fifty four rushing yards <laughs> and throw essentially two pick sixes and come away with a win at home, I mean that's. That's not going to be a good feeling, but yeah. it's still a good feeling to get that win. I mean, yeah, I've got the the cardiac clones repping that today. It's usually our mantra in basketball, but it was it was for real yesterday, Jack Trice. It was getting a little getting a little scary there towards the end, but they still were able to pull out another one score win, which yeah. is really good to see. Our second of the season, probably like our second of the last two seasons, because it doesn't really feel like that's something that we've struggled with for the past couple of years. So. I know we'll get into the the more of the X's and O's of it and what went well and what went bad, but it's just really good to see. I know. Did you listen to the uh, Cyclone Fanatic perspective at all or the post game breakdown with Williams? Will- I don't. Yeah, I haven't yet. No, I he, actually haven't. 
he himself might have had a few too many Ames lagers, but he was he he just, says he doesn't he, drink. He, oh, he was having what? He says okay. he doesn't drink when he's covering the games, at okay, least at home know. games. Maybe, maybe he I'm was wrong. just maybe he was just distraught at the end, but he was a little <laughs> a little lost for words, and he was using the term team of destiny for Iowa yeah. State a lot. And it's yep. not really something I want to like throw around very lightly because yeah, when you look at that box score, Iowa State was lucky to get a win. But I don't really feel like there was like any plays that were like certainly luck based. We got that last PI, but that was a real PI. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of those yep. calls that we did get were they're real flags. Did so, you? I mean, it's a part of the game. And I just don't really want to like talk about this Iowa State team as like being lucky in that term. Cause I know that's going to be a lot of the narrative from the national media, at least just well, trying to find no ways to scrutinize this team. It, you, when you don't have the talent of an Alabama, Georgia, LSU, et cetera, Ohio State, look at the last two national championship runner up teams Washington and TCU. They were notorious for winning one score games against, to be quite honest with you, pretty mediocre football teams. Like I remember in particular Washington last year, Washington State took them to the wire at home and they ran a reverse to convert a first down or or something like that to, to close that game. And that was Washington State who didn't want to make a bowl game. Two years ago, yeah, you look at TCU, they had that amazing last second drive to kick against that Baylor team that was okay that year and just the list goes on and on so i think you you embrace the luck but it's still acknowledge that good teams and great teams for that matter can have the ability the ability to capitalize on their luck and win football games that way i think like you said yeah when you have these these washington tcus these iowa states even byu this year sometimes you need you need a little luck to win all your games because i think I love, we love the fans, Justin. We are fans just as much as anybody. Some people forget how hard winning football games are. I, I genuinely think fans just have a, we love them. We love them. We love their passion. This is why we do this show, Justin. But sometimes people forget winning college football games is really, really hard. Yeah. And everyone wants, like when you see a team like an Iowa State or BYU or an Indiana or something like that, you want these teams to fit in these molds that you've seen of previous teams. Like in the past, like a TCU or Washington, I know that's like the hot thing right now is to compare like those three undefeated teams to those two teams. Can they be sort of in that mold? And I don't know, I just kind of feel like it's a little bit disrespectful to these teams and the uniqueness that they have. Uh BYU and Indiana specifically too like those guys have a lot of different strengths that Iowa yeah. State doesn't have but this Iowa State team is deep and gritty as hell I mean mm-hmm. had another couple injuries this weekend that I'm mm-hmm. sure we're gonna get into but I don't know I just don't really want to we 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 win one game that comes down to the wire and we're seven and oh and people start like pointing the finger yeah there's a lot of negativity which is good. I mean, if you can have those conversations and still be undefeated, like good for us, but I just feel like you kind of got to keep a level head. And I hope that's kind of what the bye week can do for us too. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's the SEC or it's the big 12 college football fans in general tend to overreact week to week. It's just kind of the nature of it. Um, And yeah, if they're, if they're talking about you, even if it's in a bad way, I always like to think you're doing something right. So if they're still talking about you, You're doing something right. All right. Let's just get into the real game. Uh, Let's break down kind of the stats. We'll break down the good, the bad, everything like that. Iowa State gets it done against UCF last night, 38 to 35. Rocco Beck and the Cyclones offense leads a touchdown drive to take the lead with, I believe they got the ball back with a minute 55 left. Justin scored on a QB sneak with 30 seconds left. Um, just the ability to stay in the fight and to keep winning football games. Where do you want to go first? I know you kind of put the notes together. You you wanted to outline the show. Do we want to talk about the good or do we want to go the bad way first? Because there I is think, both. I think, I think anytime we win, we'll want to start with the good, especially since we've already kind of touched on all the other stuff that's been going on with the team. Mm-hmm. And Well, we can talk about, yeah, let's talk about the good first. And yeah. I mean, you can't start with talking about the good without talking about Rocco, especially with that last drive mm-hmm. and the performance that he had yesterday. A lot of people getting on him. If you're just looking at the box score, I think it might be one of his worst games, especially if those two interceptions. But honestly, he threw 
essentially two pick sixes yesterday, and that was one of the best games I've ever seen him play. And I know mm-hmm. he had damn near 30 in- incompletions or something like that, but the grit and the toughness that he showed and mm-hmm. just for him to make all those plays with his legs was exactly what the team needed because we couldn't block a soul in the middle of the field. Those D linemen gave us issues. Mm-hmm. And I know that was clearly led to him missing a lot of his throws because he didn't when there's pressure coming up the middle like that uh, makes you a lot it makes you a lot more predictable makes him a lot more happy feet yeah he's quicker finish. quicker with his decisions and he was kind of some tunnel vision yeah I agree absolutely but for him to be able to like show those legs and for him to be able to make time and still find guys downfield that was the biggest revelation for me it's just how he stepped up when we needed him Lee Hunter, number two for UCF D tackle. Big boy. Big boy. Big they, boy. Were, they had some big fellas in the middle. Uh, we look, I don't want to get off track. We want to keep, we're keeping it on the good right now. So, yes, let's talk about Rocco Becht, who just, man, like g- Brock Purdy did so many great things for Iowa State, but that was one of the more impressive performances I've seen from a quarterback or a football player at Iowa State. And you're right. He missed several touchdown throws. He had two pick sixes, pretty much technically. Uh, but the kid just got up and kept fighting. And the most impressive thing about it, Justin, was that he had to lead this team in a way that he's never done before at Iowa State. And like you said, that was with his legs and the ability outside of the pocket to create plays. I think the grand scheme of things, his draft stock went up down the road you know, maybe in two years or whenever he goes to the NFL draft, because I wasn't exactly, I know last, even against West Virginia, they ran some like quarterback power and some direct snaps to him and things like that. But I feel like we've never seen him just be that elusive outside the pocket and still make some throws. Like he made mm-hmm. one on the sideline to Noel on the last possession, yep. which was just, dude, that was elite. That was, that was an was elite hard. throw. And his ability to escape and granted. Yeah. I think that led to him making some poor throws because he was more of like, I just need to get the first down with my legs, but that was what was asked of him last night. And that's what won him the game. I have to go back and look. I think he had at least two first downs on the last possession, um, just using his legs Mm -hmm. and they were UCF was not blitzing. Uh, they were kind of twisting their line, even like well, who were we hiding, highlighting Hunter and Barber, like those two big boys, like they were quick. And when they twisted, it kind of messed up the line. So Rocco had to make decisions really fast and he did it. And in an ugly fashion, whatever you want to call it, still got it done. So just an all time elite performance where the crowd, like he's, he's human. Like he could hear the groans in the crowd and some of the, some of the people, you know, getting on him to make throws. Like there's no way he didn't. And it's so easy to say though, watching the game, especially from what, when you're not there and you're watching it on TV, because it looks so simple. But when you've got these two big guys who are literally twice your size in your face, (laughs) every other play, and you don't know how quick they're going to get to you because it's not like a normal pocket breaking down when you've got edge pressure, when those guys are coming up the middle like that, it screws up your entire offense. And you kind of see it with Mauser's play calling too. Uh, I felt like that was one of his definitely a learning experience for him. It wasn't his best called game. And that's because we couldn't run the ball up the middle. Especially once Bramer went out, we couldn't throw it over the middle either. So we became a lot more predictable than we have been all year. And for them to kind of still make do with that, I thought was really impressive. Yeah, let's keep moving. Rocco had a great game. Two big picks by Bo and Javantes, Jantes Williams. The guy, I mean, it, Williams just continues to make big pick after big pick. I love that guy. He's like my favorite corner I think I've ever watched. And Iowa State's had some good ones. I want to stay on that too. Let's talk about defensively a little bit. Uh, linebackers, I thought, struggled. Um, mm-hmm. the li- okay, let's let's backtrack. Yes, the linebackers struggled, but I do not think the, the defensive line helped them out very much. I thought it was a poor game from our D-line as far as pressure and everything. But talking with the good, man, I thought our secondary tackled so freaking well 
like Darian Porter made a couple of open field tackles on the mm-hmm. edge. That was huge. Um, I think Jeremiah Cooper was the one who made a, I'm pretty sure he was the one who made the third down tackle to get the ball back on the last drive. If I, I'm just going off memory here um, and I haven't rewatched the game, but those safeties make plays, those corners make plays, whether it's needing to make tackles or you're like Williams and, and makes a huge pick to seal the game. Defensively, that's where I want to give my shout out is just how good and how healthy knocking on wood here, this secondary, this overall secondary has been all season. Yep. Yeah. For this is a game that we've kind of been circling for a while. I know we touched on it right after the North Dakota game. We knew that the run ability of this UCF team was going to give us fits. And I felt mm-hmm. like this was one of the first times where I felt like we were kind of getting out coached a little bit, this Iowa state team, because they made our young linebackers look young. This is the first time yeah. that, that our, yep. that our linebackers were really struggling, but that's the thing about this team. I mean, we've got great tacklers in the secondary where they can still kind of hold their own in the pass game and then they can help out and supplement in the run game as well i mean anytime you can hold a team to 62 pass yards and still like do what you're doing in the run game i mean that's huge yeah absolutely and then let's flip it back to the offense quickly and then we'll get to some of the the not so great portions of the game right um i thought 5.1 yards per carry i thought abu samo ran well and no he didn't have this big home run game but for the first time i think maybe last week was a good wake-up call for him because it felt like that was the first time i watched abu sama run with patience and just take the four or five yards he was given and he's athletic and strong enough to take those yards it's not like i think that's something i think jalen jackson is kind of struggling with right now he reads well but he's just physically doesn't feel like he can make a guy miss for an extra couple of yards Abu Sama can do that for you. And I thought that was awesome to see. And then for sure, receiver wise, Nolan Higgins. I mean, I know we, we keep harping on, we want another receiver in this room and we want somebody else to step up, but sometimes you just got to give the flowers to two of the best in this league right now. Noel with eight catches, 153 yards, Higgins, six catches, 58 yards. Of course he gets in the end zone again, because why wouldn't he? Justin, Anybody else on the offense that you want to highlight? Uh, no other players, really, but I kind of just wanted to like touch on Noel, where eight catches for 152 yards, two huge catches in the fourth quarter, and mm-hmm. I felt like that was like one of his sloppier games that he's had as a yep. receiver this season. Like yep. A couple of those were not very good balls from Rocco, but a couple of them were just drops in timely positions, but just like the team as a whole. We just got – this team's got a lot of gritty guys who just stick with it, and – if you're going to make noise in November, like that's the type of football player that you want. And as a fan, that's the type of guys you love to cheer for. Carson Hansen had another big game this week, only like nine carries for 90 yards and two touchdowns. You could really tell that the team missed him when he Mm -hmm. wasn't out there on the field, especially UCF and their size. He was a powerful runner that he was one of those guys that we really kind of wanted to lean into. And when he wasn't out there, it kind of felt like that kind of jumbled up our offense as well. But yeah, like you said, Sama kept running well. I know he's been taking a lot of flack just by honestly, just by how good the other guys have been doing, but yeah. he runs, he runs hard, man. I mean, he was getting hit in the backfield a lot, just right, right when he was getting the ball, but just kind of like the Iowa game, he doesn't give up runs hard. And it's just a lot of fun guys to cheer for, which I really appreciate as a fan. Absolutely. Yeah. And that running back room is is still good. Um, maybe I think it's just a learning curve for, for the offensive line. And I think the running backs that I think they can build off of. So that being said, let's get into the bad. Um, we could start, we'll start defense first. Cause I know we touched on it earlier. Uh, yeah, Curry Brown it. and RJ Harvey both rushed for 150 yards, 9.1 yards per carry from UCF. Actually, I believe, Harvey got to 196 on 25 carries. But here's the deal, guys. That's, hmm, am I going to say it? That's the best running back we're going to see for the rest of the Big 12. Maybe Taj, I was going to say maybe Taj Brooks we'll see next week. But hopefully Iowa State learns a little bit from this and we're able to slow down Brooks a little bit because you've seen Harvey now and you kind of learn from your mistakes. But in the young year, like 
Harvey is is just he's really really good. And Brown was just an issue. He's he's bigger than I thought, and he's he's still fast. And I think that is something Iowa State hadn't seen yet, which is weird. I was a little confused because you just saw West Virginia the week prior, where Garrett Green is not as physically talented as Brown is, but he's still a runner. He still takes direct runs. Um, and then they had Donaldson and Jaheim White, which maybe neither of those guys are as good as RJ Harvey, but like you get what I'm saying? Like we just saw a team that kind of plays similar. And actually, West Virginia throws the ball better. So we didn't have to, like, we didn't have the ability to stack the box like we had to last night. And still, 9.1 yards per carry. What what did it seem to you as bad as is kind of what the box score tells you? Watching the game, no, because I thought outside of the chunk plays, they actually played pretty well. The, I mean, yep. the DNA of the team and the game plan was still there, but it was just kind of uncharismatic of them to give up. What was it like three plays over fifty yards? Yeah, and all I was three gonna... of those, all three of those drives ended up in touchdowns. Yep, I was going to go back and while you're kind of chatting here, yeah, one, play, yeah, one play, eighty yards from RJ Harvey in yeah. the second quarter. Um, those dudes broke just, away fast. I mean, those are those are good running backs, and or I mean, running back and quarterback. But um, yeah, it's kind of uncharismatic to see the John Heacock defense kind of break down like that. But that's kind of college football We're dealing with a lot of injuries. Uh, played five or six straight games like that. Mm-hmm. Um, just a hot October night. It's like weird. Weird shit happens in college football. That's why we love it so much. So, I mean, for those things to go wrong and for the team to still figure it out, like that's just kind of the thing I'm going to keep coming back to. It's like when you want to be a good team, if things go wrong like that, you still got to find a way to win. And this team did. Um, definitely going to have to clean it up. Uh, I know you didn't You didn't say, well, Tosh Brooks is going to be a challenge mm-hmm. our very next game, but – so is the combination of Giddens and Johnson from yep, Kansas State. That's we're getting there. I, but yeah, yeah I know ahead. we'll touch on. I know they'll touch on that. They're kind of the hot team in the Big Twelve right now. Kind of a lot of people are kind of starting to take them over this Iowa State team, which really pisses me off. But I think it'll be a it'll be a similar game where they've got really talented runners, not the best passing offense. So hopefully by that point, like this Iowa State defense will be a little healthier and ready for that challenge when it comes it didn't to here's here's something to maybe i don't know fans can take this whatever they want to take it but maybe it wasn't as bad as it seemed on the first possession rj harvey busted a 46 yard run that basically led to their score um i already gave you the one play 80 yard run from i think that one was from brown and then uh, another touchdown their own their last touchdown that wasn't a pick six was a Another run by Jacari Brown for 67 yards. So, so they, they had, yeah, they had five touchdowns. Two of them came off of pick sixes, and three of them came off of drives where they had over a 50 40 yard plus. Rush. Yeah, yeah. 40, so, I mean, out of run, those yeah. three, and the defense can't do anything about the pick sixes, but those other three possessions, like, yeah, like you were talking about, the defense played pretty damn well. I mean, still only giving up 62 passing yards for a full game. That's got to yep. be noted. And, I mean, so that was 150 of their rushing yards right there. That was like half their rushing yards off of those three plays alone. So outside of that, I mean, the defense, honestly, they did play pretty well. Yeah, let's let's keep moving along with this. Let's go to the offensive side. Um, we'll talk about the offensive line in a second, but notable injuries. We touched on Carson Hansen. I think he's okay. He was trying to go back in. He was trying to do some cuts and stuff on the sideline. I would imagine over the bye week, he's going to be okay. Uh, yeah, and, but the Ben Bramer injury doesn't doesn't seem good. He was in uh, crutches last night in a cast. Uh, as for somebody for this team who needs more help and more reliable receivers, if you want to pick apart Rocco Beck for one thing he struggled with last night, or just honestly the season because I've I've been saying this, he if he's not thrown to Higgins or Noel, um, he gets tunnel vision and he missed like Gabe Burrell of times it's easy to get the game to kind of see that stuff, especially from kind of where the scene where we were at. So he misses guys that he just doesn't necessarily give a first read to. Mm-hmm. And Bramer was one of those guys that was kind of his safety blanket. Like that was more so his third option if he needed one. So that one hurts. So 
I think, I guess you look at Rocco Becht and it's like, okay, I think you're just going to have to build a connection with some other guys. We're going to have to get some other guys involved and some guys are just going to have to step up. I think that there's plenty of receiver talent to do it, but this one, this one sucks because Bramer, he's a stud and he's got a bright future ahead of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it really sucks because we don't have another body on the, we've got talented receivers, but we don't have another body like Bramer on the roster Mm -hmm. that we can use to replace him. Uh, especially at the position that he's at playing tight end you for the passing game and for Rocco's sake, you need to have at least a little bit of a threat in the middle of the field. I know Nolan Higgins are obviously supremely talented and they can get him out the ball to the outside all the time. But if you're never passing it in the middle of the field, it kind of makes you a little more one dimensional and you can clearly see it. Like you touched on with the kind of not really reading the defense as much. I don't know if that's on Rocco or if that's kind of the play design, but you could see the offense shrinking significantly once we stopped being able to run it up the middle and once Bramer left the game. Yeah, absolutely. And then last but not least, let's do it. Let's touch on the offensive line. Again, this is the fan perspective, not the coach's perspective. So Justin and I don't have X's and O's necessarily insight, but here's what I'll say about the offensive line. Yes, Struggled last night. Absolutely. Made plays when they had to. That's why you've got an elite quarterback in Rocco Becht. Uh, Trevor Bohr, I think it was Trevor Bohr, and um, who am I missing on the top of my head? Oh, Brendan Black, who were the two guards that kind of had tough nights, just being honest. But here's what I'll say. I covered the Big 12 a lot, guys. Like I pay attention to this stuff. UCF has a much better defensive line than you think. And that's the strong suit of their defense. They can't defend the pass. Their linebackers aren't very good, but they got big bodies and they got athletic dudes. And peeking at the schedule, you're not going to see a defensive line like this with Texas Tech or Kansas. I don't think Cincinnati. Maybe Utah and Kansas State, but you got this team early. You build off of it. I think Ryan Clanton's an awesome offensive line coach. The line has improved night and day from the beginning of Matt Campbell's tenure. So they're making strides and I think they still have good bodies. I would like to see Barrett back. I don't know when, obviously I don't think we will ever will know if what his status is, but you learn from it and, and you move on. And I think it won't be as bad as it looked if Carson Hansen can get back early. And cause I think he's just a workhorse and he's going to get you those three yards with or without good offensive line play. Don't you think? I sure hope so, because yeah, that <laughs> the 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 line play in the interior yesterday really was cause for concern. Because just like we've touched on, when the pocket and the offense kind of collapses from the middle like that, there's not a, there's not as many adjustments you can do as when like a tackle is struggling and the pressure is coming from the outside. When the middle of the field is just kind of blown up like that by the interior D line, it leads to a lot of concern. And if this team, I mean, I know everyone's talking about it. We've got it here on our little banner on the bottom college football playoff clones oh um, yeah. if we're gonna be <laughs> if parts we're, to do that for us if this team is gonna if this team has aspirations of playing december football this year we are going to see some more athletes like ucf has and some more yep. teams like that and to be completely honest if we don't want to get embarrassed i mean that's got to be something that the team's got to be prepared for justin that's a great lead way into our final segment tonight a Let's take a quick break. Appreciate you guys tuning in so far. Again, we are partnered by our friends over at No Rivals. ShopNoRivals.com. Using the code PTFS at checkout gets you free shipping. Again, we appreciate our audience so much that's tuned in these last couple of weeks. This has made this a lot of fun and very interactive for me and Justin. Help us out, guys. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Check all of our other stuff out. We got a lot of good stuff here. Play the fight song. A lot of college football content if you guys are sickos like us also justin and i have been considering we're going to take the bye week and then maybe next week after we get into it we will get you guys a texas tech preview but we're considering two videos we're maybe considering two videos the rest of the the season going forward where we hey, this is a fan perspective we we love to hear from the fans so you guys let us know what you kind of want to hear and what we want to dive into going forward because we're all ears and we're having fun with it all right Justin, last segment, you mentioned the college football playoff. You mentioned playing in December, meaningful football in December. I had Parks put a little question mark, a little sneak peek down there. Uh, If you're watching us on YouTube, college football playoff clones, 
Where does this leave us, Justin? Where do we go from here? We mentioned this early in the season. Every game going forward, it seems like we're going to play a tougher opponent. That's just how the schedule was formed out, and it kind of seems to be true for the most part. So Absolutely. heading into the bye week, heading into November, yeah, take us away. What do we got from here? Yeah, schedule's been really favorable so far, but it's only going to get tougher. And hopefully at the same time after this bye week, hopefully we're getting a little healthier and hopefully the team's getting better too because that's what you want. You want to be playing your best football in November. I mean, this Iowa State team, they've, we've been so good in October under Matt Campbell. I know we talked yeah. about it with Brocktober and now Rocktober or whatever. Rock I, don't think it's, I don't think it's really touched <laughs> on as much as it should be. I saw – because you can believe everything you see on the internet, obviously. I saw a tweet today <clears throat> that said Matt Campbell's been undefeated in October four times now. Um, I believe it. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can. it's at least believable stat. It's got to be damn near close. I don't think Rocco's lost an October game yet. So, yeah, they, it's, was, oh, but, I was thinking of Kansas last year. No, I think... That was uh, November. Yeah, that was November, wasn't it? But that's kind of been the thing with these Iowa State teams. Outside of 2020, when we made the Big 12 championship, We've had really good Octobers, and then we've kind of slowed down when the schedule got stiffer in November. But that's yep. not really what I see with this team. I know the competition's getting better. We still play three of the top five Big 12 teams in Texas Tech, Cincinnati, and Kansas State. And you're never going to sleep on a road game against Utah. So, I mean, the season's still very much ahead of us. We're just over the halfway point. Still got five games. But I'm pretty optimistic about this team. I mean, some of the injuries are getting a little scary, but this bye week couldn't come at a better time. I think yep. it's going to be good to kind of dial the noise down a little bit for the team, get your mind right. Now we've at least seen some of our flaws put out there on tape so other teams can see that, but also it gives us a chance to get better. So that gives me a lot of confidence going into it. Well, and you know, as, as unenjoyable at some points in the game felt yesterday, this is what great teams do, though. Now we've seen it twice now, being the Iowa game and the UCF game, where challenges just hit you square in the jaw. You have to make adjustments. It seems like maybe you're out of it for a lot of the portion of the game, but you keep fighting. You keep playing for a bit, uh, another down. And I want to get this Matt Campbell quote right. Uh, teams that play tougher for longer, you know, that's I think that's really tougher their, for longer. That's the quote this year. It's their MO, and that's exactly what it was last night because they got absolutely sucker punched in the mouth. And, hey, guess what? The tougher team won last night because they played tougher for longer. I think this would be a fun little thing to, to sign us out, Justin, before we get out of here. Um, yeah, what I want to talk about the entire landscape of the country because there's teams out there that need Iowa State to lose. There's the perception of, can the Big 12 get two teams in, or is it just going to get the automatic qualifier? What, if you're an Iowa State fan, who are the teams you want to lose? Because you're probably going to be paying attention a lot more to the entire landscape now that this is, especially next week when your team doesn't play. We yeah. talked about this a little bit in our, our recap show today, Justin. Here's a couple of teams for me, at least on the top of my head. Indiana, Notre Dame, Alabama. You need those three teams to lose another game. You need Notre Dame to have two losses because they've already got that Northern Illinois loss on the top of their head. Um, Indiana, they have Ohio State. I'd love to see them lose another game in between there because they're probably going to be favored in the rest of the way besides that Ohio State game. And then Alabama, you, you need these SEC teams to be 9-3. and three. Now, I know how the college football playoff works. And I know how the country perceives the SEC. And yeah, th there's a chance. It, there's a chance that an SEC team at nine and three could get over a 11 and one Big 12 team very well. But nonetheless, you still need them to lose. So those were kind of the three teams on the top of my head. Is there anybody that you can kind of think of? Or what do you think Iowa State needs to keep doing? Just keep winning, obviously, make the Big yeah. 12 title your goal. Yeah, I'm not going to change my tone on it from the beginning of the year just because we talked about it at the beginning with the AP poll. I don't really trust the national news, the AP poll, the college football <laughs> playoff, any of that when it comes to Iowa State because, I mean, it is a history thing. When yep. teams are close, when you're comparing teams, you're going to look at history. It's just a natural thing, and it makes sense. But I don't. if Iowa State doesn't go 12-0 and or if they don't win the Big 12 championship, I don't think we're getting in. 
I just if we drop a regular season game and if we don't win the Big 12, I don't think we're getting in. And I don't really see that changing because you can see all these other teams like Indiana, Notre Dame, Ohio State, like things like that. Like now it looks very possible that the Big Ten could get four teams in. I know yep. the SEC is going to throw a fit if they don't get four teams in. So you just got to keep winning and keep worrying about yourself. Don't drink the rat poison. Don't don't even don't get invested into it. Don't get invested into it. There's still so much football left for this mm -hmm. Iowa State team to play. I was looking back at the poster over my shoulder. So we've got five games left. Five games ago, we were going into the Arkansas State game. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just like want to put that in perspective because that a great was point. a long time ago. So there's still <laughs> a lot of football left to be played. So don't get ahead of yourselves. I mean, enjoy where we're at. But uh, I didn't answer the question. I like when Kansas State loses. I really hope they keep – I hope they lose again. <laughs> Because they do look you good. Do. I could I could say that they look good, but we I would appreciate if they lost again and then we ended their season at the end of the year. That would be cool. Well, well, I don't think you need them to lose because if they already have the BYU loss, so if Iowa State keeps winning, and, and even if, say Iowa State stumbles one before that last game of the year, you're still going to have a one loss to your name, and you're going to have a head to head with Kansas State to go to Dallas. So I don't think it really matters that they actually, I almost prefer that they have this just one loss. So they, they have something to play for because I like when need, they lose. We, I like when need, they lose and I like when Iowa loses. So we need pressure on Kansas state. We don't want a Kansas state team going into that game at the end of November with nothing to lose. I, I know you like to see them struggle as, as much as I do. I'm a simple guy. I like when the Cyclones win and I like when Kansas state and Iowa loses. <laughs> That's fair. I'm sure like a lot it. of people can agree with you. You're kind of the man of the people, so I, I think a lot of, <laughs> I think a lot of people would agree. But no, that's that's perfectly said. I think we're we're running a little long on time, so I'll kind of send us out here. But I agree, Justin. You just got to worry about the next game, and you have to worry about yourself. And at the end of the day, if Iowa State does stumble once um, before the last the the Big Twelve championship, that's the nice thing about this twelve team playoff, man. You got one game to win. You got to go win it in Dallas. Whoever you're going to play, it's just you against you at this point. And I think that's exactly what Matt Campbell preaches to this program anyways. I I, I, I would hate to – there's no way in my mind that Matt Campbell listens to any outside narrative or national media. He never has and he never will. That's why we love him, right? Okay. Anything else, Justin, before we kind of close out of here? Got some new exciting stuff coming up a play the fight song so um we appreciate again everybody tuning in so far but what do you got if we have to get out of here uh not much more for me i think you wrapped it up pretty well there uh i uh, hopefully we hear from you guys down in the comments i am looking forward to maybe beefing up the content a little more maybe getting mm -hmm. two videos out a week i mean we're getting to an exciting part of the season some every yep. game from here on out is pretty historic for iowa state so we want to be there to cover it and talk about it with you guys so we'll see where it goes from there yeah, as as the Cyclones keep winning, times are good. Everybody's happy. Everybody wants more Iowa State content. I believe we are going to start uploading our play the fight or our fan perspectives from us at Iowa State, Iowa, and Nebraska will all be on your Spotify and Apple podcast feed soon. If you prefer little audio there, but YouTube's where it's at. We really love it here. So if you are here. Make sure to do a couple of things. Check out our friends at No Rivals, shopnorivals.com, using the code PTFS for free shipping. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. We want to keep this thing going because we're, we're fans, Justin, and we love bringing more fans in to, to kind of share our same passion. So that being said, again, appreciate you guys tuning in. We will be back again next week. Enjoy the bye week. Catch up on some sleep. We have Texas Tech in two weeks and a giant November ahead. Thank you guys once again. And as always, how I've got to send us out. Go Cyclones.